Good evening, fellow peasants. In case you thought the black and decker auto wrench was the worst Father's Day present you ever bought your dad, I offer up a challenge. Behold. There's a whole lot of kindling in here. Can someone just ship me a damn box cutter? Ouch, that hurts. With old-fashioned soldering irons, you're stuck to the wall. Plus, they can burn through anything. There's got to be a better way. Introducing Cold Heat, the world's first cordless cool-touch soldering tool. As seen on TV, back in the good old days of post-9-11 paranoia and the first boob I ever saw on live TV, it heats in seconds, just like better soldering irons, but... Unlike this old eye stabber, it doesn't take 15 minutes to cool. It's instant. Interesting that during a time of such prevalent patriotism that they would design the packaging with the colors of the Russian flag. Like most of my memories from 2004, the high-density polyethylene clamshell has developed a slight sepia tone around the edges. It's so advanced it won the prestigious Red Dot Award for New Tool Design. I looked into this Red Dot Tool Award, by the way. It's kind of like an Oscar in that it's legitimately prestigious, but you also have to buy it. So let's get this open. Everyone hold your breath. I'm waiting for the M18 soldering iron to come out. A little clamp on the end so you can solder copper tubing. I bet it could do it. No more torching your joists. This was five bucks, new in box, and comes with free wire strippers. Hot dog. Where's the wire strippers? Oh, lame. I gotta send them money to get my free wire strippers. Bastards. Eight weeks for delivery? Don't they know about Amazon? It's sticky. Real sticky. Like crawling on your hands and knees at a McDonald's play place on a busy weekend. Kind of sticky. I only play there during the week now. I decided to cave and start a Patreon. There's a couple of reasons why. One, I've got my eye on this Soviet death machine, but it's 500 bucks plus 100 bucks to ship it, and the ad revenue ain't cutting it. And the Ukrainian guy selling it won't haggle. You must really need the money for something. Second, I want to do some things that I know won't have mass appeal or that might have boomsticks in them or even bad language words. Things that would scratch the creative itch but might also get me algorithmed by YouTube again. The threads decided to shear off rather than let the screw unscrew. I think the housing's like biodegradable. Soy? So I'll do a little exclusive content. I'll put early releases there and maybe some polls about potential future projects. It'll take up more of my time, but my wife is enthusiastically supportive and says it's okay if I'm out in the garage more because of it. So we'll see how long that lasts. Ah, hidden screw. You gotta take out the screws so you can access the screws that let you access the more screws. As of yet, I have no idea if this soldering iron even works. And even if it doesn't, the worst thing about it is still the clamshell. It's flimsy, ill-fitting, and sticky like a fruit roll-up. The battery compartment is more like some AA-shaped empty space with Christmas ribbon melted into place because otherwise, I don't think you'd be able to get the batteries out without completely tearing it down like this. One printed circuit board with a PLC and it looks like some supporting components. Looks like they scratched off the numbers, so I couldn't Google it and make some ignorant joke about the Chinese name. They saw me coming. 
some surface mount resistors hot glued on and a, a cheap and crooked little power transistor. Not much else. There's an LED here powered by that PCB, so that's going to be your heating indicator, which is mysteriously off when this guy solders this energized IC in the commercial. It's a fake! I wonder if that chip is just dusty. Nope, I was wrong. There we go, got one in. Aw, baby vice quips. Version 1.0, build date March 8th, 2028. Oh, the future is bleak. A couple more resistors and some diodes cold soldered to the board. And I don't mean like cold heat iron soldered. I mean, just, you know. At the other end, a bargain basement slider switch like you'd see on those disposable LED candle lights that you turn on once and then throw away after the wedding reception. No heating element to be found here, just a plastic two pin socket. And of course, you can't solder without a white LED. No current limiting resistor, unless it's one of the 37 on that board. Here's the heart of the contraption, the tip. It looks and feels like two graphite halves with some sort of insulating epoxy holding them together. The pins in the socket conduct voltage to each half, but current doesn't flow unless you short the two together with something conductive like solder. I'm not sure if current is intended to flow through the solder itself or through some resistive element in the tip that would then get hot and melt said solder. No continuity. Let's ohm it out just to be certain. Nope. So all the current is flowing through the solder itself, which is creating a dead short, overheating it, and causing it to melt. I don't know how old these are, so to give it a fighting chance on its first try, we'll hook it up to a DC power supply. Bring it down to 4 times 1.5 six-ish, and we'll monitor the current draw for funsies. I guess it's kind of hard to mess this up, unlike prom night. Sorry, Madison. Energize. Draws five milliamps on standby. That would be the LED. Even with double A's, this thing is going to last longer on standby than Terry Shiva. Oh, we got sparkles. That white LED is clearly in parallel with the tip because it goes dim when you apply solder. A helpful feature for soldering in dark blazes, but it's technically melting solder. Let's see if that board has any capacity to control the ampacity. Holy crap! We have ourselves a little AA powered spot welder here. Looks like it's keeping it under three amps. So either that anonymous chip does do some current controlling or maybe it's just the natural resistance in the tip itself. Speaking of which, it's a little uncomfortably warm. And now it's room temperature. Neat. It didn't cool to zero degrees Fahrenheit like the commercial promised, disappointingly. But now we're going to slap it back together so we can see how it runs as God intended on batteries. I'm pretty sure this screw doesn't go there, but I don't care. And I know you don't either. And they're dead. So now I'm going to do something that the typical cold heat soldering iron owner will spend most of their time doing, replacing the batteries. Please subscribe to my Patreon so I can go back to feeding my children name brand batteries. Back in business. The biggest challenge is getting the solder to contact both sides of the tip at the same time. You really got to push. 
And that's a lot of arcing for 6 volts and 2 point something amps, aka under 18 watts, for those of you who got a B- minus in physics, which is equivalent to 0 0.02 horsepower somehow. I'm pretty sure that's true. They ain't lying. She's barely burning me at all. I can't, I can't grip this sticky, slimy thing in my hand anymore. We're going naked. I want to see if this draws the same current off the batteries as it does off the power supply. Because if it does, I'd say that IC back there is definitely doing active current control. I'm desoldering the power wire on the soldering iron with my soldering iron, which isn't going very well because I just melted open the clamshell with it and didn't clean the tip. Always clean your tip. This damn thing even on? I wish Harbor Freight would bring back the free screwdriver set. The only thing more useful than a slotted screwdriver is a free slotted screwdriver. Looks like it's drawing a pretty consistent, not quite three amps. I'm struggling to find a good application for this. If you need portability, get the Milwaukee soldering iron. Or, if it's 2004, buy a butane one. It's not really good for wires because you have to push so hard to make contact and wires don't want to stay still and cooperate. I also wouldn't want to use it on sensitive components as we've demonstrated almost three amps will be flowing through whatever you're soldering. That still scares me every time. I think I found one super esoteric application where this thing shines. Desoldering through hole mounted components. The little nub sticking through keeps the slot and the soldering iron tip perfectly centered. Then you can just push down on it, let the tool do the work. I can't stand solder wick or solder suckers, so I just add a little bit of extra solder, and then... It looks like a messy disaster, but the spatter scrapes right off any non-metallic components with your fingernail. If any viewers from elsewhere in the Anglosphere take issue with how I pronounce the word solder, it's called a regional dialect. It's a common pronunciation here in the 13 colonies, and we fought in one of war, so we wouldn't have to hear your bullshit anymore. This feels like welding, in that it's ice cold when the circuit's broken, and then it heats up instantly when you complete the circuit, strike your arc, and add your filler rod. Someone in the comments is going to feel the need to point out that it's still not technically welding. I know, shut up. But it's kind of like a hybrid between soldering and arc welding, and as a concept, I find that cool. Work smarter, not harder. So in conclusion, just like the auto wrench, this is a piece of junk. Total crap. Based on a really cool idea. It really does heat up in seconds. And just like the auto wrench, I think you could make it awesome. Just a couple of changes. First, make a body out of something other than melted down Happy Meal toys. Second, at three amps, this is gonna eat double A's like my toddler eats organic out of season blueberries. Two 18650s and USB rechargeability would be bitchin'. Rechargeability's not a word, by the way. Third, the tips. You really have to press it into your joint, and this one is starting to chip. After only soldering a couple screwdrivers. Sturdier tips, plus throw some extras in the box. I am curious, what would happen if I added a little... Power! Question is, do I bypass the circuitry and LED and apply power straight to the tip with the knowledge that those other components will get air fried? Or do I just plug her in and ruin this beautifully engineered tool? I have 27 alligator leads, and every single one is red. I don't know you all well enough to go into why. Whoop! 
the red status indicator LED popped. Let's just confirm that we're still getting power to the tip. Yep, there's most of it. Let's see if this improves performance at all. Now that's what I call soldering. It smells like high school electronics class. <coughs> I think I've just built a $5 battery terminal welder. This piece of junk spontaneously combusted, through no fault of my own, I'd like to add. Should probably disconnect the fuel tank. It appears to be self-sustaining. I'm disinclined to put this out, but I'm not financially ready to buy a new cutting mat. I'm gonna go get something from the scrap pile, BRB. Got this all aluminum heat sink from a big controller board. I should do a good job of sinking the heat. Also grill marks. Can you smell this through your screen? If you can, I wouldn't breathe it in. Joe McCarthy, Richard Nixon, Studebaker, Baker, Television, North Korea, South Korea, Marilyn Monroe. So I'm not sure why it was so sticky. And I'm not sure why it's burning so well, but I suspect it's for the same reason. Is it out? I'm gonna go mail this in with $5.99 to get myself a pair of wire strippers from 2004 in six to eight weeks so that I could buy at Harbor Freight today for $4.97. Thanks for watching. Cold heat's easy and convenient. I use it for quick repairs around my house without worrying about getting burned. Good God, you're a woman. I honestly, I couldn't have called that.